Elite Wrestling returns to pay-per-view. And you know what? There was a lot to love about last night. There was a lot to learn about last night as well. There was a lot. There was a lot. There was a lot. Yeah, there was, there was a lot. This is AEW All Out 2020 graded. Two matches on the buy-in to let you know about. Joey Janela defeating Serpentico after a good back and forth with a diving elbow following an attempt at interference by Luther, cut off by Sonny Kiss. Opening match there, B-. minus. Enjoyable way to start the buy-in. Then we get three and four from the Dark Order facing Private Party. Some good tag team action back and forth here. Uh, we see uh, mainly Dark Order dominant in this one, but Private Party rallying with some great tag team manoeuvres and the gin and juice to pick up the win at the end of it. Giving that a B- minus as well. Nice, solid tag team action to get us underway at All Out. We get underway proper with our first match of the pay-per-view. It is the tooth and nail match, pitting Big Swole against Dr. Britt Baker. Brawling through the dentist office, cinematic wrestling style to get us started. This falls outside of the dentist office where Swole uh, throws Baker into the wall while she's in her wheelchair. Reba turns up to make the save for Dr. Britt. Uh, ends up getting put in the bin, chucked in the dumpster by Big Swole. They fight back into the dentist office. We see Britt Baker try and use a drill. On Big Swole, she fights it off. We see Britt Baker try and use Novocaine on Big Swole. Swole ends up pushing the injector into Britt Baker's leg. That numbs it enough for Swole to fight off the once again interfering Reba and then put sleeping gas into the face of Dr. Britt Baker to win by what I guess would be uh, a TKO, toothpaste knockout. B minus for the opening match here. Really fun stuff with these guys. It was nice to see uh, Big Swole and Dr. Britt Baker doing something a little bit off the beaten track. This was meant to be on the buy in, as we talked about, and due to uh, a, a royal kickoff online, this was moved to the main show. Made no sense to put this in the opening match, though. Could you not put this a little bit deeper into the card? Felt weird to kick off a pay-per-view by saying, here we are, we're live! Let's go to the dentist. Felt a bit strange. But what they did, I thought, was really good. What should have been the opening match was what we had next. Young Bucks facing Jurassic Express. We're seeing this new edge to Matt and Nick Jackson. Some slightly heelish behavior here. They're not out and out bad guys, but there's an aggression there. A uh, great spot which sees uh, Northern Light suplexes delivered to Jungle Boy all through the ring and then over the top of the barricade and onto the concrete. It looked nasty. Matt Jackson grinning from ear to ear after nailing that one as well. They keep Jungle Boy in their corner, keeping the tag from Luchasaurus. There is one point where they end up knocking Luchasaurus uh, off of the off of the apron. So Nick jumps into the corner and pretends to reach for the tag for Jungle Boy, you cheeky so-and-so. Marco Stunt gets involved here to stop this from going down. He's been picked on by the, by the Bucks throughout this match, so it's justified that he gets amongst it here. Luchasaurus gets the hot tag. He just wipes out everybody. He is a force of nature in there. Hits a beautiful dive outside of the ring onto the Young Bucks as well. Young Bucks will rally from this. We will see super kicks delivered to Marco Stunt. Poor little lad. He's got a bad leg and everything. Luchasaurus will hit a dive over the barricade that will look stunning, uh, but it leaves Jungle Boy all alone, and he ends up eating super kick parties and double V triggers for the one, two, three. Young Bucks picking up the win in this opening, in what should have been the opening match. It still feels like the opening match, even saying it. B minus here, some really creative stuff. Enjoyed uh, watching uh, Young Bucks show a little bit bit more of an aggression here. I like where this is going. And is the V-trigger finish a little call to something that may happen later on? Hmm, mm, might be. The Casino Battle Royale is up next. Winner receiving a future shot at the AEW Championship. They're entering the ring in bursts of five. Now, in some cases, the tag teams are split up. The Blade was in uh, the first batch, but not the Butcher. But yet in the second batch, we had, uh, we had Santana and Ortiz. And we even had Ricky Starks and Brian Cage entering together. In fact, it was after they entered, they were shortly followed by Darby Allen, who, that was when the match for me really kicked off. It was when Darby Allen got amongst it, started fighting uh, with Starks and Brian Cage, taking a bit of retribution out on those lads. Another interesting bit during the batch entrances was Sean Spears, who, instead of going straight to the ring, just stopped and did commentary for a bit. 
Fair enough. The Joker, the to-be-determined entrant of the Battle Royal, was Matt Seidel. Last man in, he comes charging down to the ring, making his AEW debut, gets on the top rope, goes for the shooting star press and botches it completely. Mahov's gutted. He's all right, though. That's the main thing. He's all right. Just felt bad for him. Came out with all this passion. Just ends up tanking it, bless him. We see Darby Allen eliminate Ricky Starks and Brian Cage just flattens Darby Allen. Ricky Starks goes under the ring and produces a body bag. There's some thumbtacks there as well. Brian Cage puts some thumbtacks in this body bag, puts Darby Allen in the body bag and zips it up, and then bombs him over the top rope onto the, onto the, onto the entrance ramp. It was flipping horrible that was. Most of the tacks fell out as well. So, for the rest of this match, you've got wrestlers trying to cautiously not bump into the thumbtacks. Just felt a bit unnecessary. Your final two ended up being Lance Archer, who had a killer night eliminating people left, right and centre, and Eddie Kingston. Kingston doing his best uh, fighting against uh, Lance Archer. We even have the Butcher and the Blade return to try and help their boy out. but. It's just not happening tonight, and Lance Archer ends up choke slamming Eddie Kingston off the top rope and through towards the Butcher and the Blade. Lands on them, hits the floor. Lance Archer is the winner of the Casino Battle Royale. He is facing uh, the AEW champion at a future date. Casino Royale for me was a B minus. It was, it was good. There was some nice stuff in there, some great set pieces between wrestlers. There was a lot of stuff that just felt a bit thrown in there, like Sean Spears talking on commentary, like the didn't really feel like that did anything for the match. And then you've got the body bag bit, right? This was a really cool moment, a unique moment, a bit of a grim moment, but it was just in the middle of the arbitrary phase of the Battle Royal. I feel like you could have saved that for the end of the match. I feel like you could have had Lance, they could have had it come down to Lance Archer and Darby Allen, and then had Archer doing that with the help of Jake. That would have been very cool. But I think because Brian Cage, I get, I know there's a few between Cage and Darby Allen, I get that, but it just felt a bit lost in the shuffle. It's a bit like, it's a bit like buying, it's a bit like buying a, a 17 foot glass giraffe for the kitchen. You don't need it for the kitchen. I mean, it's cool, it's great, but you know, it's a bit lost in amongst everything else. And you're not really gonna use it for anything, but it's still cool to see. <laughs> Is that a good analogy? I, I don't know. Either way, Casino Royale, B minus. Lance Archer, the number one contender. I'm a big fan of this. It's from here that the night goes a little bit weird. And it's the broken rules match between Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara. It starts on the field at Daly's place with Matt Hardy calling for Sammy Guevara. Here's Sammy in the golf cart uh, looking to extract a bit of revenge from the stadium stampede, trying to run down Matt Hardy, but he misses. They end up brawling. They end up fighting onto uh, a, a crane. It looks as if they're gonna, Matt Hardy is going to hit a side effect off the crane. Sammy counters it and hits a spear. Both men come flying off the crane. They are meant to go through a table position below, but the table just sort of folded. Matt Hardy just cracked his head on the floor at the bottom, and he was just spark out, spark out. Guevara's up, like taunting, and you can see Aubrey throwing up the X, but Matt Hardy is out. Sammy tries to pick him up at one point and Matt is just dead weight and they sound the bell to call this match off. We then cut to the commentators and uh, they're sort of talking about the risks and stuff involved and, you know, health and trying to just sort of buy for some time. And we're thinking here, OK, well, hope Matt Hardy's OK. That's that. That sucked. Looked horrible. Please get well soon, Matt. And in your head, you're kind of thinking, okay, well, so what's next? But then we cut and then the match is kicking off again. We've got Matt Hardy and Sammy Guevara fighting in the corridor way. The, 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 Justin Roberts about to announce the end of the match. He then shuts up and the bell sounds again. They then carry on fighting through the crowd. They go up, they go climbing up a scaffolding because that's what you do when you bang your head. You climb up a scaffolding like you're Steve Blackman in 2000. They end up fighting on the top of the scaffolding. Matt Hardy lands a punch to Guevara and he goes crashing through the stage, stays down for 10. Matt Hardy wins the match. You could tell this was the finish they had planned and they just thought, let's just go straight to that instead of doing everything else because Matt might be injured. Um, 
I'm not grading this. Felt really uncomfortable with this. Matt Hardy was Matt Hardy was out. Matt Hardy was spark out for a while. He got back up and was calling for the match to continue, but there is no way. Like you should have let him carry on after he banged his head onto concrete after falling off a crane. You should have had the the, the sensibility to actually usurp whatever decision Matt Hardy wanted to do and say, now nah, we're gonna stop the match there. It's so much, do you know what? It's so much easier to, to rewrite a botched angle than to, fix a, than, to, <laughs> than to fix a botched head. Like, I'd rather them rework the angle and have Sammy Guevara win and figure it out down the line and call it off there, but they didn't, they let him carry on. And that felt really uncomfortable to me. That felt like, um, that, that felt wrong. I feel like that wouldn't happen in other companies. And I've seen people online, right, already kicking off saying, oh, we cheered, we cheered when Mankind went back up the top of the cell in 98. We cheered then, didn't we? Yeah, we did. But we used to sell cigarettes during cartoons. Does it make it all right now? I'm all right now. Just annoyed by the fact that people genuinely think that because we did that in the, in the 90s, it's fine now. Matt Hardy was knocked out. He was spark out. The match should have ended. I ain't grading this. This is not worthy of a grade. And you know what? This... This not the wind out of the sails for the rest of the night. It's really obvious that the mood is somewhat down. They try and kind of repair it on commentary a bit, but this knocks the, this knocks the wind out of the sails for the night, I do believe. Mm -hmm. We move on to the AEW Women's Championship match. It's the NWA Women's Champion, Thunder Rosa, facing Hikaru Shida. These guys have a crack up of a match. Some good set pieces to start off with, with both sizing each other up. We see Rosa get the advantage earlier on, and we see Shida on the on the receiving end of a lot of offense from Rosa. Rosa's clearly done her homework, is the impression that we get here. There's a bit where Shida is outside the ring. She positions a chair like she's gonna do a run-up jumping springboard, but as she's running towards it, Rosa comes back to life, clearly paying possum, jumps off of the off of the chair, lands a drop kick into the face of Hikaru Shida. The possum was well and truly played by Rosa. They keep swapping control throughout this really hotly contested match. Rosa hitting a Death Valley driver onto the apron. We see Shida hitting a Meteora onto the ramp. Uh, Thunder Rosa just keeps on kicking out those kicks out of a Mishinoku driver and you can see Shida just like, whoa, how is that a thing? Uh, she finishes off uh, with the big old Tomo Shi, that shining wizard to the face of Thunder Rosa to get the one, two, three. Giving this an A minus after what we saw with Matt Hardy, it was ne they needed something to get things back on track and I feel like this match at least made a brave effort at that. I think the night is still a bit tainted from here, but brilliant match with these guys. They really went for it, I thought, and um, I th I'd love to see more of Thunder Rosa in, in AEW, most definitely. And Sheeta is just having these great matches whenever the opportunity presents itself on these big stages, she goes for it. And then there is a, there is a discussion that continues to be had about the women's division in AEW. Uh, I won't add to that today, but we know, we know what needs to happen. Uh, Sheeta as the forefront is, is excellent though. We hear from Kip Sabin and Penelope Ford, and it turns out they're getting married. Ah, they're getting married on Dynamite. Oh, and next week, Kip Sabian is going to reveal his best man on next week's show. A wedding on a wrestling show. What could possibly go wrong? We come to the eight-man tag. It is the Dark Order, led by TNT champion Brody Lee, facing the Nightmare Collective, Scorpio Sky, and Matt Cardona. Some great exchanges to start this one off. Uh, some great stuff from, from Matt Cardona, who's there to impress, you can clearly tell. QT Marshall gets some stuff in there as well. Great dive from him late in the match that I wanna give some love to. Scorpio Sky doesn't get much of a showcase here, not as much as I would have hoped anyway. Uh, that you, you would have seen Scorpio Sky uh, on uh, clips from this match already in which Sky gets into the ring, Anna Jay gets into the ring, goes to hit him, and then Brandy Rose turns up with a big old pump kick. Rhodes with the pump kick to the face of Anna Jay. She rolls out of the ring, and then you would have heard JR saying, oh, did Anna Jay have a wardrobe malfunction, or is that just wishful thinking? Uh, hard Jim. Old Jim. 
But the bill for this is with Dustin Rhodes and Brody Lee. They finally get into it in the third act and they're just swinging punches at one another. Uh, Dustin's looking good in there, but Brody ends up with that discus lariat taking him down, hitting the boss, I think it's called. Uh, and as he knocks him to the ground, he tags in Colt Cabana and says, hey, oh, Colt, finish him off. Colt goes up top, ends up missing whatever he was going for. <laughs> And Dustin rolls him up for the one, two, three. The, the goodies have won. The good guys won. Uh, Brody Lee chews out Colt Cabana before storming off, smashing a chair against the barricade. We then have a promo backstage with Dustin Rhodes, who's delighted with the win tonight. And it's backstage that Dustin finds out, along with all of us, that on Dynamite, he's going to be facing Brody Lee for the TNT Championship. And then Dustin Rhodes cuts this promo straight down the camera, says he's going to do this for his brother, he's, and he's going to bring hell with him on Wednesday. It was a great promo by Dustin. Oh, when he is on, he, oh, he is on. This match I am giving a B to. It was really good stuff in there. Wasn't the greatest match of the night. It was, uh, there was a, I would like to see more from Scorpio Sky and, and a few more other players in there, but it did what it did. It serviced a point to, to move a storyline along. And it was, and there was some great stuff in there. The World Tag Team titles on the line next, FTR challenging Hangman Adam Page and Kenny Omega. Justin Roberts tells us this match has a 60 minute time limit. And considering how long this show has already gone, that feels like a threat more than anything else. Uh, this has been a, a long show and the heat in Jacksonville is sweltering. And you can tell that plus a few other things has just taken the wind out of the sail of the crowd there. They should have crowd noise piped in in like a thunderdome. That's a crazy idea. And uh, no, the tag titles are on the line here and we see uh, a great series with these guys. The, the, the chemistry here is great and the story they're telling is great is that, you know, Harwood and Wheeler are this well-oiled machine. They've got Tully Blanchard in their corner, call of the shots. And then you've got Adam Page and Kenny Omega. They've been the world tag team champions for a long time now. They're a bit frayed at the edges and there's a bit of distrust between them both. And you see that coming through in the early stages of this match where you see Adam Page just like swinging wildly uh, to FTR, ends up nearly hitting Kenny Omega in the process. So there's tension already. FTR take the lead, wearing down Page until Omega gets the hot tag, lands the Terminator tope uh, to move things back in that direction. But FTR, they're just on it tonight and they just start wearing down Kenny Omega. Another hot tag from Omega to Page, another great series of double team moves from the champs, but an attempt at last call gets blocked by FTR and they just take over again. This is a long match that ends with miscommunication. Omega accidentally leathering Page with the V trigger and uh, this leads to two spike pile drivers by FTR for the one two three and Harwood and Wheeler are your brand new world tag team champions they leave with the belts and Tully Blanchard it's a strong look for them then after the match Omega looks like he's gonna uh, hit Adam Page with like a bit of a table thinks about it and then just throws it down then there's a, a lovely a, vi a lovely visual here where Adam Page stands up he, sort of staggers towards the center of the ring and collapses as if he's going to fall into the arms of Omega. And Omega just lets him fall. And then Omega walks away. The cameras follow him as he's leaving the venue, walking out of the ring, through, gorilla, through, the, through the, the, the dusty position, all the way through the back area. It's a bit like that scene at the end of Monty Python's Meaning of Life. Just keep this way, this way. I will show you the way, this way. Young Bucks turn up and they try and stop him and he's like, no, that's it, I'm going, I'm going. He drops a little hint here, drops a little hint. He says, it's time for a clean break. Clean? Cleaner, you say? Clean? I see you, I see you. Omega gets in a car and drives off and the Young Bucks are sort of stood there like, oh dear, that's not gone the way we hoped. It's the one thing we didn't want to happen. A minus for the tag title match. It was excellent. No doubt that these guys were going to really go for it. And uh, it's one of the best matches of the night. It brings the, 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 the mark comes down a touch because it felt quite long at points. It felt a bit long in the tooth at some points, like going long for the sake of going long. But the great, it was great work by, by all the teams. FTR as tag champs is a great, is a great image going forward. I'm a fan.
It is time for Mimosa Mayhem. Orange Cassidy versus Chris Jericho. Fans come alive to sing Judas and then go back to sleep again. Thanks for coming. Uh, oh, Orange Cassidy goes for the, the jump attack. The moment that the match starts, he jumps for Jericho, ends up eating a code breaker, and then Jericho is in charge throughout the first part of this match. It's a series of, of takedowns and, and attempts at dunking Orange Cassidy into one of the two pools of Mimosa at ringside. Jericho keeps cutting off Cassidy's comebacks. There's a great moment though where Jericho has Cassidy in the walls of Jericho and Orange Cassidy crawls towards the ropes. And instead of going for a rope break, he keeps crawling towards the pool of Mimosa. He grabs a jug, fills it full of Mimosa, ends up throwing it in the face of Chris Jericho to break the hold and get a, a, a near fall on an inside cradle. That was a very creative bit, I enjoyed it. End comes when Jericho goes for a razor's edge. He's gonna try and drop Cassidy into the pool from the highest points, but Cassidy manages to drop out of it. Hits two orange punches to Jericho. He comes flying off the ropes and lands into this beautiful hot tub full of what could be Buck's face as the match ends. Orange Cassidy, the winner of Mimosa Mayhem. The image of the match is Jericho just lay there unconscious in this spa of Mimosa. <laughs> it, was a, it was a delightful picture. Uh, given the match a B plus, I thought this was a great showing by both. I think it was a great way to put Orange Cassidy over in a unique way. I, it, the, the weird part for me was, as like I watch AEW, but not as, not as vigorously as Jack does, because Jack does great it, but I will dip in and I've been following the Cassidy Jericho stuff and I've really enjoyed it. I find it funny how it's quite an intense rivalry between these two, like it, almost a blood feud, but yet it's being paid off with a bit of a comedy match, which is a, a bit of a weird juxtaposition for me, but be that as it may, it was a really fun match. And so we come to the main event of the night. It is the World Championship being defended. John Moxley puts it on the line against the number one contender, MJF. Moxley heads out through the crowd and a fan tries to jump him and gets taken down immediately. What is, what is the end game there? What are you hoping will happen? When you get him, he's going to knock you out. What, are you, what, is, the, what is the end game here? I'm always baffled by people that, that rush wrestlers like that. What are you hoping to? Silly people in Jacksonville. MJF wrestles and taunts like a right wrong un to start, but Moxley pays him back by battering him senseless all around the ring. We see MJF laser focused on the shoulder of Moxley, wearing it down for a big part of this, until Moxley flips MJF into the turnbuckle post and MJF bleeds. Oh, this man bleeds. We have this, 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 this visual of MJF, like blood gushing out of his head, whilst Moxley pops his shoulder back in. I feel like, I feel like this is the 80s. I feel like, I feel like I'm in an amphitheater, <laughs> watching like, watching something on closed circuit television. This is incredible. MJF's cut actually is really bad. There's a point where Moxley's got a sleeper on him and it's just like bubbling. <laughs> Uh, Moxie makes the decision to bite the, the head of MJF. Uh, not during a pandemic, mate. Not during a pandemic. Didn't need that. Match was fine with it and without it. I, I would have happily had the match without it. And the thing is, that didn't even lead to the end of the match because MJF comes back, hits a heat seeker, hits a salt of the earth, but can't put away John Moxley. And Moxley uh, keeps on kicking out. Wardlow gets involved here, throws the diamond ring to MJF, who doesn't quite catch it. And then Moxley sees that MJF was about to cheat. So Moxley, bear in mind that the paradigm shift is illegal. When the referee's back is turned, boom, paradigm shift to MJF. Makes the cover. One, two, three. Moxley retaining the AEW World Championship. Gonna give this an A minus. I thought this was a really strong way to end the night. And I was nervous that this would fall flat because of how long the show has been and other factors, but it didn't. It was, these guys really gave us something very special. A lot of people have kicked off about the finish. Like, well, if the, what was the point in banning the paradigm shift if Moxley was gonna use it to win? I was like, well, Moxley's like, that's, it kind of fits Moxley's, Moxley's MO, doesn't it really? He's just, he just doesn't care. Like he, he had an opportunity to do something a little bit sneaky and he did it, he took it. And I feel like, I feel like Stone Cold Steve Austin would have done something similar in a match where the stunner was banned. He'd wait till the ref wasn't looking, he'd just drop it anyway. So I think that's in keeping with Moxley's style. So I'm all right with the finish. Now I've corroborated with Jack for the grades because I know Jack is your AEW graded guy. I'm merely an interloper. 
and I wanted to make sure that like we were on the same page and we were for the majority of this stuff so with that I'm giving AEW All Out a B I thought there was lots to love at the, in this show some great matches some great pieces I thought there was some confusing segments I feel like it's great that all the performers have got freedom to do what they want I feel like sometimes they, they were throwing quite a bit at the show that they could have maybe d less is more in it that's the phrase less is more you could have had a bit less you could have got a lot more um, I thought commentary wasn't oh it's JR I'm sorry it uh, there was points tonight where JR just didn't it didn't work for me and I, I love the bones off of JR and I feel like he's a he was a it t at points here like a little bit of a hindrance like energy levels and, and odd comments and stuff I hate saying that because I love JR and uh, also the the Matt Hardy stuff I think damaged the night a bit I feel like that if they could have could handled that a lot better they could have just cancelled the match and moved on but they didn't and I think that left a bad taste in quite a few people's mouths and it affected the rest of the show but there was a lot to love in this show and that is why I'm giving it a B for All Out 2020. Stay safe, love you B.